Our customers generate over $2 million every single month for their direct consumer brands. And because of that, I've had the opportunity to see what is working for increasing their conversion rate and what is hurting their conversion rate. So today I'm going to be talking about four things that you can implement into your product pages for you to bump up your conversion rate. Now, if you have a dog water conversion rate currently, you can implement these four things by the end of this video. They're all pretty basic and pretty easy for you to implement, and you'll see a increase in that conversion rate. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Jonathan Zamora. I am the founder and owner of a business called Settler Systems. We are a e-commerce accelerator that helps brands scale by 30% in 45 days or less. Now, there's going to be two things that I want to touch on before we actually talk about the four tactics. Now, these are going to be baseline understandings that I need you to understand before we get into the tactics. We'll make them quick, but they are important. So these two things, what are they? Number one is going to be how to determine a baseline for your conversion rate. And then number two is figuring out where your constraint is. So that way you know what you should be focusing on to increase the conversion rate. Now, why does increasing a conversion rate even matter? If you take a conversion rate from 2% to 3%, that is increasing your sales by 30%. Very, very, very impactful. That little percentage point matters a lot. And so we're going to go ahead and dive really deep into each of these aspects. So that way you can start making your advertising more profitable. So here are the two things that I need you to understand. That way we could get into the meat and potatoes. Number one is going to be what I call the rule of 12. Now, what is the rule of 12? This is just a general baseline for your conversion rate. It's very basic. Okay. Whenever we are looking at a funnel, I drew out the funnel for us. At the very top, we're going to have a view content. Following that, we're going to have add to cart. Following that, we are going to have initiate checkout. And then lastly, we're going to have the good stuff. This is purchases. So that's what each of those mean. Now, 100% of people are going to see the view content. This is our traffic that we are driving from whatever our traffic source is. So this is 100% of people. That's our baseline of data. Following this, we're going to use the rule of 12 to determine what our baseline conversion is going to be. Now, this is a baseline. It is a general rule of thumb that is going to allow you to determine what a good conversion rate is. So for add to carts, we are looking for 12, this is where the rule of 12 comes in, 12% 12 of these people to add to cart. Then following this, we're going to have 6% of people initiate checkout. So we're going to cut that in half. And then for the last one, we're going to cut this in half one more time. And we are looking for a 3% purchase rate. That is the general baseline that you should be looking at for your conversion rate. So pause this, look at your own store for a second, make sure that your numbers line up with these. If they do, then great. All you need to do is go through and increase the amount of traffic that you have. That's probably your lowest constraint. But if any of your numbers are off, like you have a 10% add to cart rate, then you should be focusing on add to carts. If you have a less than half of those people are initiating checkout, then you should be focusing on initiating checkout. And the cool thing with this is you get to focus on the, the step before it. So if 12% of people are uh, adding to cart, let's just say that this was actually, uh, you know, 3% of people were adding to cart. We're going to focus on the step above it. Or if we have half of these people are initiating checkout and this is our constraint, then we're going to focus on the step above it, which is add to cart, which brings me to the second second thing. This is how you're going to determine what your constraints are. So the rule of 12 is very linear, right? It's very much so a straight line. We have 12, then we have six, then we have three. This scales up and down. So if your add to carts are say 20, then you should be taking half of those and saying, okay, 10% of them should be initiating checkout. About 5% of them are going to be purchasing. This is just the general drop off that you will get whenever you are running an e-commerce business. Now, with that being said, not every single funnel is perfect. Remember, this is a base line. And what we're looking to do is find our constraint. And so what that means is if we are seeing only 20% of people go from this step to this step, then we should be focusing on increasing our amount of initiated checkouts. Now, if we are having issues with initiated checkout, where did I say that we should be focusing earlier? That's right. The step above it, we should be focusing on the add to cart page. Now, if we are having a uh, issue with say only 20% going from initiate checkout to pur purchase, where should we be focusing on? That's right. The step above it, we should be focusing on the initiated checkout page, which is where they put in all their payment info. If you're confused on that. Now that's the easy part. The a little bit more of a difficult aspect is going to be when this is not as linear as we're seeing here. So typically there's going to be two different scenarios that I'll see that will cover about 80% of the circumstances. So the first one is going to be this aspect right over here, where we have a lower amount of people that are 
actually adding to cart, but then the rest of the numbers look fine. Well, we'll just say it's like 8%. And then the rest of it is like four and then two. So these numbers are all good to go. They check off, they're good. But this is the number that we need to increase. The second scenario that I'll see is vice versa, where the add to cart is really high, but then we are having a hard time actually getting people to initiate checkout and purchase. So scenario number one is going to be with ATC. Uh, so add to carts too low, right? So this scenario here, you should be focusing on increasing the product page. Very simple. That's going to be what we're going to be talking about today because that's one of the biggest ones that you'll see. And then number two is going to be if add to cart is really high and you're having initiated checkouts be too low. In this case, usually what I will see is there's going to be too many upsells on that page. The page loading time is a little bit too slow uh, or you aren't providing enough proof to your customers so that way they're actually sold. And the things that we're going to be talking about today are going to talk about this. So this is how you're going to find your constraints. Look at the baseline, figure out where you are having the biggest drop off. If you have a big drop off in a certain section, if it's initiate checkout, focus on the step above it, which is add to cart. If it's add to cart, then focus on the step above it, which is the product page. If it's purchased, focus on initiate checkout. Okay. Now that you understand those two rules, let's get into the four different aspects that you should be adding to your product pages. Now, the way that I'm going to be showing you this is through two examples, because I feel like that's going to be the easiest way for you to be able to start getting these into action very quickly. Now, the first page that we are looking at is called Boom by Sydney Joseph. This is by a very famous marketer. His name is Ezra Firestone. Their store is absolutely crushing it. Last time I heard they were doing roughly 30 million a year. So they are a big e-commerce brand. Now, the very first thing that I'm going to be looking at whenever I am looking at a product page is going to be social proof. Now, what does social proof mean? This is basically just selling your customers on your credibility. This could come in the form of testimonials. This could come in the form of other businesses that are showing that they are supporting your brand. So in this sense, here, we're looking at Azure store. Here we have a testimonial that is right at the top. This is front and center. If you look at your product page, it's most likely the case that you have all of your testimonials at the very bottom. Here, if you have a good testimonial, bring it all the way up to the top so that way people know that they could trust you. I have another brand here where they do this really well. This is uh, a little bit different of social proof, but they use all of the different brands that have promoted their product. They show that they have been featured in these brands. So if you really like men's health and you see that men's health is promoting it, if you like men's health, whenever you see their logo on this website, you're going to be a lot more likely to trust this brand because they have been featured by Men's Health. And you can see they also have even more social proof here where they show all of the testimonials and the volume that they are currently getting them at. So number one is really starting to sprinkle in a high level of social proof. You could use an app like PageFly to go through and customize your product page a little bit. But with this, go through and start to lace in a high volume of social proof all the way throughout. You can see that they have that right here and this funnel uh, as well. So that is going to be step number one. Step number two is doing what is called a risk reversal. A lot of the times whenever somebody is making a purchase from a brand that they don't know, they want to make sure that they're making a good decision. A lot of people are terrified of making the wrong decision. And so an easy way to make it so that that is no longer going to be friction for them to add to cart in the first place, what you're going to do is do a risk reversal. This is usually going to come in the form of a guarantee. Now, if you believe in your product, this should be no problem at all. Uh, 100% no risk money back guarantee. You will see them structure theirs this way. And you could also see on this brand Kettle and Fire, they also show that they have a risk-free money back guarantee. It's a very easy way to get people to trust your brand and to be willing to give you guys a chance. So that is number two, going through and offering a risk reversal. A satisfaction guarantee is more than likely going to be enough for you to cover this basis. The third thing that you should be implementing is doing the math on your offer. Now, this is a very basic one, but it's important. Whenever you are giving any type of an offer, whether it's $5 off, $10 off, 10% off, uh, or buy one, get one free, always do the math on how much they are saving. What I mean by that is bring that to the forefront of their attention. So that way it is crystal clear that they are getting a good deal. In this sense here, boom by Sydney Joseph, they are offering a 6% savings, which isn't all that significant, but they still take the time to actually call it out and show that there is a little bit of savings. Here on Kettle and Fire, this is a little bit more explicit where we can actually see the price that is here and crossed out. Most stores will do this, but then they also go through and say 7% off or 20% off. 
off. Just calling out the percentage off that they are going to be getting makes it so that the offer is a little bit more top of mind for them and will show them that they are getting a good deal. So always do the math on your offers. The fourth and probably the most important out of all four of these aspects is having a hook that resonates with your audience and starting with a strong hook. So what is a hook? Essentially, a hook is going to be something that grabs people's attention, gets them to realize that they have a pain and that you have the ability to transform whatever that pain currently is in a easier or more simplified fashion than whatever they were doing previously. So here you can see that Kettle and Fire, their hook is finally the all-in-one nutrition source that your body needs to thrive. If you are looking for healthy food and you're looking for your body to feel better and you have low energy or whatever it is, that is a hook that is going to resonate with you. I always recommend split testing hooks because this is going to be the thing that gets people to actually read the product description. Here, we also have this with Boom by Sydney Joseph. They say here in this section, it's simple, safe cosmetics and skincare that allow your natural beauty to shine through. Their target demographic is older women that are trying to look young and youthful. So in this circumstance, their target market doesn't necessarily want to be all dolled up and have all kinds of crazy makeup. They just want their natural beauty to shine through. This is a hook that is telling them that it's easy, it's safe, and they are going to get that end result, the natural beauty that they're looking for from these products. Very, very strong hooks. Now, most likely, you're probably not going to have this right out of the gate. You almost never will. So what I always would recommend is split test, split test, split test. When it comes down to the hooks, when it comes to the social proof, test different types of social proof or test different hooks and see how this affects your conversion rate. What this is at the end of the day going to help is going to be getting more people to add to cart. Now, if you're having issues with your initiate checkout or purchase, really, this is going to be either A, unqualified traffic or B, you're adding some type of friction that is unnecessary, whether it's an upsell or something that's distracting that's not allowing them to move through the sales process. But that is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, smash the thumbs up button, hit that red subscribe button to join the freaking family. That's going to be it for this one, though, guys. I will see you on the next video. Peace.